local on the foreign finished products and mr speaker those goods which we cannot manufacture in kenya mr speaker i second and i support i ask the order honorable members take your seats order take your seats uh, honorable cheng Honourable members, I now propose the question, which is that the Finance Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 30 of 2024, be now read a second time. Okay. Okay. I thank you, Honourable Speaker. Mr. Speaker, given the importance of this uh, finance bill, and uh, you know, many Kenyans are following us, Mr. Speaker, and Mr. Speaker, to distinguish between the facts and the fictions which are given, being given out there by this honorable house. Mr. Speaker, I want to seek your indulgence that we have every member speak for five minutes instead of 10 minutes, honorable speaker, so that we can have all of us contribute. Honorable Speaker, thank you. Honorable members, according to a motion we passed at the beginning of this session, the mover of this bill has 45 minutes, which he expended. The seconder, 15. Majority leader and minority leader, 15. Each member speaking has 10 minutes. Now, Bowen is suggesting that you reduce it to five. Order. Is, is Bowen's proposal supported? Let's start with 10. Let's start with what you passed. As usual, my screen is full. Order. We already have 10, so nobody needs to propose 10. Five is what is proposing. Do we go with five or 10? Okay. Let it's not quite clear. Let's start with 10 and see how far it goes. Robert Mbui. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when we were all elected, we took oath of office to defend the Constitution 2010. The spirit of Article, spirit of Article 1 and Article 95 of the Constitution. Order, honorable members, order. The matter of 10 or five minutes is now moot. We will see how to revisit it later. And those of you who are given a chance to speak, if you exhaust your points before the, you end the 10 minutes, you can yield the floor so that somebody else can be able to get the opportunity. Go on, Robert. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. So in the spirit of Article 95 and Article 1, I stand to represent the more than 50 million Kenyans who have asked this House to reject this insensitive, punitive, ill-advised piece of legislative mistake. Mr. Speaker, I say this because uh, in the 10 years that the former President Uhuru was president of this country, we had finance bills every year, but it's only one that had very serious contention, and the only contention that was there was the increase of VAT, in fact, the introduction of VAT on fuel of 8%. Mr. Speaker, the Kenya Kwanzaa regime has been in office. This is less than two years, and the second finance bill they have brought to this house, and the first one, have elicited so much contention from Kenyans that I think there's something seriously wrong. Mr. Speaker, um, in fact, let me say this that uh, the controversies of the 2023 finance bill, before we even get to this one, even, in fact, got a nickname for our head of state because Kenyans out there are calling him Zakayo, the tax collector. Mr. Speaker, we must move from that concept of ensuring that every year 
we impose punitive taxes on Kenyans. Mr. Speaker, Kenyans have not even recovered from the negative effects of the 20, 2023 finance bill. Because, Mr. Speaker, the 2023 finance bill already drastically reduced the disposable income of Kenyans. Because, Mr. Speaker, we increased pay as you want then, we went and increased the NSSF, we went and increased the NHIF, now we are proposing to go to SHIF, which is even higher. Mr. Speaker, we introduced a housing fund. Mr. Speaker, it has been very, very painful for Kenyans. And Kenyans were hoping that this year things would be better, considering that in the last election campaign, Mr. Speaker, they were told that uh, there will be person money, which means money in the pockets. Mr. Speaker, what we are realizing is that actually what this regime wanted was not to put money in anyone's pocket, but to take any money that was in the pockets of Kenyans. Mr. Speaker, the cost of government services have gone so high that we can't even afford our children to have ID cards. So, Mr. Speaker, when I look at a bill that proposes to increase the already overburdened Kenyans, it is something that we have to stand firm and reject. Mr. Speaker, let me say this, that uh, we were told to tighten our belts. And I know this is the intention, that we be hit very hard the first two, three, four years. But Mr. Speaker, you know, some people will lose their lives because of the hunger now and because of the stress now. What do you do with them when they are six feet under in 2026, 2027? We are told to tighten our belts. And as we tighten our belts, Mr. Speaker, it is shocking to see the excesses that this government is going through. We are taxing Kenyans to raise money to run the government, and yet we have excesses. We are putting in money to build houses, to repair, to paint houses that were built with 400 million, and we are spending 600 million to renovate and paint. Mr. Speaker, it is very, very painful. And then we are told, tighten your belts as Kenyans. And 200 million Kenyan shillings is used on a return trip on a chartered plane to the US. Mr. Speaker, this is not acceptable. And all those missions are begging missions. When, what we are doing here is we are living beyond our means. Mr. Speaker, I seek the attention of all those members that passed the 2023 finance bill and later on went and told Kenyans they didn't have time to read it. Now listen keenly. If you didn't read that one, you listen to us. Mr. Speaker, oppressive tax policies do not make good economic sense. And Mr. Speaker, let me just put it this way, that the last year's proposal was intending to raise 214 billion. But because it was oppressive, Kenyans did not pay as expected. And in fact, what we collected was only 131 billion out of that finance bill, which was only 53% of the target. Mr. Speaker, the more you put, the more burden you put on people, the more likely that they are going to look for ways to avoid that, that tax. So, Mr. Speaker, we have to be careful. We warned that that would happen, that people would evade. You didn't listen. We warned that it would lose, lead to job losses. Many companies left this country and are now producing elsewhere, and unemployment has gone up. We warned that uh, the tax increase is always passed to the common man. Mr. Speaker, the hustler of this country, the Mamamboga, the Boda Boda, is the one that will carry the burden. Any time taxes go up, it is not the big fish that actually pay these taxes. Because all they do, when you increase cost of fuel, all they do is pass it on to the consumer. And the consumer is Mamamboga. The consumer is the last man in the chain. So, Mr. Speaker, we have to be very careful. Now, the 2024 tax proposals are as oppressive as 2023. We have not even fully implemented the 2023 ones. The E-teams, now we are discussing how we are going to remove it. There are those, uh, you know, those, those taxes on Chamas that we have not yet implemented. Now we have brought other major proposals. And I hear Mr. Speaker talk of uh, that uh, the tax uh, proposals of 2023, it's like they have been reduced. Mr. Speaker, the bill that we hold in our hands, the bill that we read, has not been, has not been amended. What we are listening to is stories, Mr. Speaker. Because when we go to the committee of the whole house, what guarantee do we have that the proposals we've been told about here will pass? We can be hoodwinked into believing that those things will be passed, and when we pass this bill, the last minute it is opposed and we lose out. So we are going to oppose it from the beginning up to the end. Mr. Speaker, this proposal on VAT on bread, Mr. Speaker, I don't even know who could conceive such a thing. You have put your hands in the pockets of salaried Kenyans, business people, 
People have been made to pay for profits that they don't even make on turnover tax. And now you want to tax our children because you are putting your hands in the pockets of our children. Because the biggest consumer of bread are our children in secondary school because that's where they spend their pocket money. Mr. Speaker, some of these are totally ill-advised. Mr. Speaker, VAT on financial services, VAT on money transfer, VAT on M-Pesa. Those were, I do not understand who was thinking, what were they drinking, what were they smoking when they came up with those ideas. Mr. Speaker, it is very unfortunate. 20%, 25% uh, excise duty on edible oil, import duty. Mr. Speaker, these things, 2.5% on motor vehicles. These ideas were preposterous. But Mr. Speaker, I believe that all those proposals were actually a smoke screen. If you read the 48 laws of power, you know, smoke screen. You lead them down the wrong direction until they lose focus. What has happened is that we have concentrated on those ones that were very clear. But the real intention was to do what this committee has proposed. That suddenly, after we think that things are okay, they increase RMD, road maintenance levy, road development levy, and the import duty. That is what the intention was. In fact, the net effect is likely to be that this finance bill may be collecting almost as much, if not more, than the previous proposal. So, Mr. Speaker, I stand in solidarity with those Kenyans that said that uh, this must be rejected in totality. Mr. Speaker, I want to ask the Inspector General to stop interfering with Kenyans when they are exercising their democratic right of picketing because Kenyans have a right to defend themselves. When they see the Constitution being mutilated, when they see their pockets being ravaged, when they see their children being unable to go to school to put food on the table, they have every right to defend themselves. Inspector General, can you concentrate on defending the country and stop interfering with Kenyans? And this revolution, which is unfortunately a kindly revolution, Mr. Speaker, has, it is unstoppable. Because when we were in the streets, you could call Raila Amolo Odinga, you could call Stephen Kalonzo Musioka and ask them to tell the troops to go back. Who do you call when you pass this bill? So I reject and I vote, I, 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 I reject. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you.